Today's video is inspired by a video that I watched from Eric and Andre over at Gun Gamers. In their video, they talked about the 400 FPS phenomenon, where players think that they need to reach 400 FPS for their airsoft gun to be able to be competitive on the airsofting field, and they talk about some reasons why they believe that is not true. And their video really got me thinking. Why is that so? Why do players think that they need to achieve 400 FPS to be competitive on the airsofting field? So I've been thinking about it for the past week, and here are some of the top reasons why I think that that is so. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give my own opinion on what FPS I believe you need to achieve on the airsofting field to be competitive. So one of the first things that I think that this is caused by is marketing by manufacturers. And the reason I say that is, especially for people that really market towards newer players, they advertise FPS and they advertise high FPS as being better. A lot of companies like Saima, JG, um, a lot of the other Chinese clones, they all market saying that their guns shoot 400 FPS because when you think about it, well, if it shoots hotter, it has to shoot better, right? That's why I'm buying a nicer entry AEG over a Springer because Springers only shoot 180 to 200, high 200 FPS. So you're having the assumption in your mind that if I buy a higher FPS, then I'm going to have a better gun. And that's not necessarily correct. And we'll talk about that later, but I think that's marketing not only from the manufacturers of cheaper airsoft guns, the entry-level airsoft guns, because if you ever think about it, pretty much all entry-level airsoft guns are at the higher end of the FPS spectrum for what's allowed on a field. Um, and they do the same thing with sniper rifles. A lot of the cheaper sniper rifles shoot like 550 out of the box. And I think besides the marketing from the actual manufacturer itself, I think it's a lot with retailers as well. So a lot of retailers really push that a gun is quality because it shoots 400 FPS. And again, going back to that, you think that more is better, and we'll get to that in a second as well, but one of the best examples of this that I've seen in my time as an airsofter is I saw a company which they do market more towards the mid and beginner market. I saw them say that 0 0.20 gram BBs are better than 0 0.25 or 0 0.28 for the sole fact they shoot faster. Now that's wrong for a couple of reasons because yeah, it does shoot faster because there's less weight. However, you're not going to have the same accuracy. Your BBs are gonna fly all over the place instead of staying straight throughout the shot. Um, but yeah, that's just the marketing that's lying to you to get you to buy their product under the assumption that more FPS is better. And I think part of the reason why we assume that more FPS is better is partially due to our culture of thinking that more or bigger is always better than something that is lesser or doesn't shoot as hot. I mean, everyone wants more money, faster car, faster internet. All of our conditioning as a society is moved towards the idea that more or bigger is better. And I think that's part of where this entire thing comes from. And that is easily applicable over to airsoft guns because of what we talked about for this entire video. Everyone assumes that a higher FPS is better. But is it? Honestly, well, now we're just talking about rifles and handguns here. For rifles and handguns, you honestly, at least in my opinion, you could disagree with me, and I hope that some of you do so we can discuss this down in the comments. I think the 330 to 350 FPS is the optimal range for an airsoft gun for a few reasons. Um, I, I more lean towards 330, but 330 to 350, let's give it a 20, 20 FPS uh, variable. I think that that is the best range because you still have enough accuracy to reach people. Um, and for those of you who are going to disagree with me, my Crytac CRB shoots 290 FPS right now because the spring has settled down from when I first got it. I still hit people regularly at 220 feet with my 290 FPS gun. Um, so I think that 330 to 350 is great because you still have the range and accuracy that you need. Um, a lot of things with range and accuracy are based off of the quality of your barrel and the hop up. Um, you know, another thing that these beginner, these companies that target beginners do is they always say that more barrel length is better. And that's arguably true. Um, now, I mean, if I have a really crappy 20 inch or 16 inch barrel and I have a really high quality, really high hop up, like, I, like if I have an R hopped uh, seven inch barrel versus this 
bad hop up, bad barrel 1620 inch, I'm probably gonna have better groupings and better distance with that seven inch barrel that's a really high quality. So something that we really need to reinforce in the airsofting community is that, again, bigger isn't always better. Um, the quality of the make of your barrel and the quality of your hop up especially, that's going to be the real deciding factor on your accuracy and your range. Now, groupings are a little bit different. If you have the longer barrel for the BB to travel through, your groupings will be a little bit better, but we're playing with little plastic BBs. The difference is negligible for most ranges where you'd use that as an advantage. I mean, your grouping may go from this to this, but at those ranges, you still have to account for wind, things like that. Things that just pick up the BB and make your BB fly away off to the side. I mean, we're not shooting real bullets here. We're shooting pieces of plastic, tiny pieces of plastic at that. So wind really affects BBs. So that's just something that we need to accept. And we need to teach newer players that, again, more isn't always better. So that's something that I personally agree with. I think that Andre made a great point in their video that 330 to 350 is the best. You can use it at more fields because if you buy a 400 FPS gun, congratulations, you just uh, discluded yourself from going indoors. And again, going back to the whole barrel length isn't everything, I think the perfect build for Airsoft is 330 to 350 on a 10 or 11 inch barrel. It is long enough that you can have decent groupings outside. It's short enough that you can use it indoors. I mean, at least for myself, I know there are huge guys like Eric who can wield a full length M16 indoors. Um, really after 11 inches, it's kind of difficult for me to maneuver indoors just because of my size. I'm not huge or built or anything like that. I'm just some tall, lanky kid. So honestly, I think that 330 to 350 is perfect because again, you can use it at a multitude of different fields. It's not too hot where you have a minimum engagement distance besides just the fields uh, don't be a dick rule. So you still have that 10 foot engagement distance, but at the same time, you arguably don't have to have like a 50 or 60 foot engagement distance if you're running a DMR. And FPS really is negligible. You don't get that much of an advantage going from 350 to 400. It's not something that you're really going to notice now. I know someone's going to mention, well, why don't you make sniper rifles shoot that um, slow? I think it, it's different going from 330, um, going from 330 to 400 versus going from 330 to 450 to 550. Um, I think that sniper rifles, because they always have a minimum engagement distance, that FPS does help. And sniper rifles are also a whole different beast because they are a bolt action system. Um, I, I'm a little torn on DMRs because they can shoot hotter. Typically DMRs are allowed to shoot from 401 to 450 because they have a semi-automatic capability and you can quickly doom, 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 doom versus a bolt action where every single shot that you fire, you have to work your action. Um, so I think that I'm, I'm a little bit in the gray area. Um, I think they should have a minimum engagement distance to kind of reinforce the role that they're in as a marksman, not as an assaulter. However, at a lot of games, no one really enforces it. Um, and I think that's really a shame because there's no really external way to tell because there are guys running AR-10s, SR-25, SCAR heavies as assault rifles in that under 400 FPS category. So it's kind of hard to gauge how to really make sure that people are following those minimum engagements um, just because it's hard to tell what is one and what isn't. I mean, sure, you can do colored zip ties, but who, what referee is going to see a zip tie unless he's right up and close to you? So just to recap on this video, a lot of the reason why players think that 400 FPS is necessary is due to marketing that has been drilled into you since, it, since you first got, excuse me, into airsoft because a lot of beginner companies really push that FPS is better. And in all honesty, what is going to help you the most is a good barrel and a good hop-up. Honestly, hop-up is the most important part, at least in my opinion, the hop-up is the most important part of having an accurate and long shooting airsoft gun. Because again, you can have an airsoft gun with a seven inch barrel out shoot a full length M16 as long as you have a good barrel and hop-up. If that M16 doesn't have a good barrel or a good hop-up, their, their range is just gonna be bad and their groupings are gonna be bad as well. If you guys disagree with me and think that for rifles, for semi or fully automatic rifles, do you think that FPS really matters that much, jumping from 330 to 
400 FPS. Personally, I think that, again, it 330 is a fantastic range because you can take it to indoor and outdoor, but if you're the type of person that doesn't play indoor, you may disagree with me. And if you do disagree with me, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on the video. And if you'd like me to do more of these response style videos, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Eric and Andre from Gun Gamers are great friends. I think that their video was a great conversation starter and they always do great work on their channel. I will leave a link in the description below to where you can watch their video and hear their thoughts about FPS. Um, a lot of them were very similar to myself, however they do have some differing opinions from me based off of their history in Airsoft. If this was your first time here on the BB Warrior, I would love to have you subscribe for more Airsoft and content every Tuesday and Friday. You can do that by hitting that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, make sure to hit the bell icon next to it for updates when we post new videos here on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure to follow us on social media. Links will be down in the description below, right below that subscribe button, as well with the video from Eric and Andre over at Gun Gamers. You can follow us on social media for pictures, small reviews that couldn't make it into a U video here on YouTube, talking points and discussions, things like that. Links will be down in the description below. This has been Lane from the BB Warrior discussing why 400 FPS isn't necessary in Airsoft. And really, it's just you being marketed to, thinking that more is better. And I will see you all next time.